Hello viewers, so welcome back to my channel. I have come today with my new video, The Geography of South Asia from Book 2 of UASST for Grade 7, Lesson Number 1. So here we have the learning objectives to learn about the major physical divisions of India. So there are four major physical divisions of India which we will be seeing it today. Second is to admire the beauty of the rainy season in South Asia. But here what pictures I have put just to make you understand that how uh, Bangladesh experiences a very heavy rainfall in contrast to UAE receiving the most scantiest rainfall ever. To draw comparisons and contrast between Bangladesh and UAE in terms of rainfall and the CC link is geography. Why? Because obviously we are talking about the landforms, the climate and besides that it is also linked with maths because you have the graphs. Uh, uh, here we have the warm-up exercise. It is very much from your textbook. It's a very simple exercise. You can go through the answers. So before I take you further to my video, just a humble request as always to please subscribe to Learn SST. If you haven't subscribed, press the bell icon for the notification of my latest videos and please like and share it with your friends and relatives. So here we have the countries included in South Asia. You can see it so clearly. Uh, with the help of the map, they have shown us the different countries. Please ignore the map of India, especially the Kashmir, Jammu and Kashmir. Uh, they have uh, not given a correct map of Jammu and Kashmir. So please ignore that part. But you can see the regions which the South Asian countries cover and the countries which are included in South Asia is very much evident from this map. Now here we have the geography of the Indian subcontinent. So during the invasion of Alexander the Great in around 332 BCE, that is before the birth of Christ, the Greeks named the region as Indos in reference to the Indus River. So this is how the modern word of India is borrowed from the ancient Greeks. So they get the credit of naming the country of India. Why? Because of the river Indus, which they called as Indus. The physical geography of the Indian subcontinent includes four types of landscapes. The two mountain ranges, which are the two major mountain ranges, then we have the plains, the vast extensive plains and the huge coastline in the southern region of India. See one by one the geographical features of India. The first geographical feature is, which you can see it in the map also. In the far north, there is a chain of mountains that include the Hindu Kush, the Karakoram and the Himalayas. The world's highest peaks are found in these mountains, including Mount Everest. So there are a lot of uh, high peaks in the Himalayan upper stretches of the Himalayas. But then this is said to be, that is Mount Everest is said to be the roof of the world. Why? Because it is the highest peak of uh, the Himalayas, not only of the Himalayas, but of the world too. These mountains have glaciers that feed the major river systems. Water from the water systems flows into the river Indus, then into the Arabian Sea, to the west and the Ganges River into the Bay of Bengal to the east. Now you can see the Ganges River over here. You can see how the Himalayas during the time when we have the winter, obviously you find glaciers over there. Okay, that is it is snow clad. Most of the part of the year they are snow clad only mountains. And the peaks of these mountains when you have the summer uh, arriving, during that time they start melting. So when you have the melting of the glaciers, that gives water to the Indus River 
the indus river which is said to be the longest river in asia with 2000 miles of length this river on the west side it goes and joins the arabian sea whereas on the eastern side it joins the bay of bengal so uh, let us see the geographic feature over here there are important passes or places that allowed human travel through this difficult terrain when i say terrain that means it's a region which is full of mountain ranges the gomel and the khyber passes in the northwest were used by the invaders over many centuries to enter the indus river valleys and the indian plateaus so to come to the mainland of india these were the passes which were used by the uh, invaders and they came usually from afghanistan and other regions of central asia other passes uh, through the chitral valley and through the karakoram mountains allowed communication and trade with central asia over the valuable silk road or routes so there are other passes too and which was very much common in those days and it was operational those days now you don't find that silk road anymore because there are modern means of transportation available so people don't want to go by uh, by land or by road uh, and carry their wares and sell it off in other countries next is the indus river flows from the indian himalayas through kashmir and into the punjab region where we find the agricultural land before passing into the arabian sea all the early civilizations and cities were established along the plains of the rivers of the indus river valleys so the earliest civilizations all the civilizations if you see have flourished on the river banks and indus valley civilization is one of the oldest civilizations which has flourished on the river banks so this is what he means over here why did the people come and live in this particular region and started this civilization their habitation over here just because of two things one is the agricultural land it was so fertile suitable for agriculture purpose and secondly because of the easy availability of river water for various purposes Uh, let us see the second geographic feature and that is the great ganges uh, river as well as the river brahmaputra and you can see the region in the map wherein they have shown you with the red uh, portion and then there is a blue portion red is for gang ganges and the blue portion is for the river brahmaputra now you find large concentrations of people and farm lands over here so it's a very uh, rich fertile region now since it's a rich fertile region it is suitable for agriculture and obviously easy availability of water resources so we call it as the great ganges plains and the crops which we get over here are such a bumper yield which we don't find that much of yield in any part of the country the way it is over here because of the various tributaries and distributaries of these two major rivers this particular pla uh, place has become a flood plain every year we experience floods in this particular region and since we have floods obviously the flood plains uh, make the region quite fertile uh, uh, this is the third uh, geographic feature and which we are talking about is the vindhyan mountain range Uh, lies to the south of the river plains and it separates the north from the south of the indian subcontinent uh, we have also the deccan plateau region over here uh, which you will find it in the southern uh, region and it experiences seasonal rains obviously the rainy season is not around the year but it is only for 4 months from june to september so it's a drier land and completely dependent on the rains the annual monsoons come from the winds of the indian ocean and the are the only rains there are rivers that bring water from winds of the vindhyas but with much less water flow than those of the great northern rivers northern rivers are fortunate because they get the uh, 
the water supply twice a year one is from the melting snow the other one is from the monsoons over here in this case in southern india it's not uh, the same we don't have the glaciers in southern india as we don't have the uh, tall uh, mountain ranges over here and obviously then the rivers are completely dependent on the seasonal rains next is uh, the limited supply of water in the southern region agriculture in the southern peninsula region depends upon the system of irrigation that is in the absence of rainfall we have to make the water available for the farmlands volcanic rock of the deccan plateau in the south was used to build temples and other structures it is the igneous rocks and those igneous rocks helped the people of uh, the various uh, regions that is the malabar and the coromandel coast and uh, the people of kerala and tamil uh, people and they made good use of this igneous rocks to make diff different kinds of temple architecture and uh, the languages which evolved over there so there are uh, five languages in south india which evolved over there uh, so all the regions of india uh, especially in the southern region have their own language so when i talk about uh, the people in southern india they have got five major languages that is uh, malayalam kannad uh, tamil and uh, tulu and so on Uh, is the fourth uh, geographical uh, feature the fourth geographic feature of this continent is the coastline which you can see for yourself so clearly ancient shipping trade routes were developed to the arabian gulf and the african coast in one direction and to the southeast asia in the other that means on the left side when you go you will find the arabian gulf very much you can see it in the map so also you can see the african coast and when you go on the right side that is towards the southeastern side you will find a number of islands and countries over there so the trade ancient trade developed with all these countries uh, and the major trading hub was india eventually european fleets that is the many many ships together fleets entered the indian ocean from the 16th century onwards from that time slowly and steadily they started with uh, the particular expansion of uh, the country so that they can politically also have the country under their control uh, here uh, we have uh, activity 1 which is from your textbook you can go through this is activity 2 and 3 which is again from your textbook a very simple exercise now we here we have the monsoon seasons and i have put up a small little map over here so that you can just go through the map and see that how fortunate are the people of indian subcontinent that god has blessed them with the natural rainfall so from the indian ocean look at the map from the indian ocean you have from the arabian sea and from the bay of bengal region you have the winds advancing and this advancement you will find during the time when we have the monsoons approaching the country so it is the southwest monsoon winds which bring about a rainfall to this region of india the mainland of india so and the neighboring countries of course so you can see for yourself the indian ocean you can see arabian sea and the bay of bengal and how the arrows are showing the advancement of the southwest monsoon winds uh, uh, this is the third uh, geographic feature and which we are talking about is the vindhyan mountain range uh, lies to the south of the river plains and it separates the north from the south of the indian subcontinent uh, we have also the deccan plateau region over here uh, which you will find it in the southern uh, region and it experiences seasonal rains 
obviously the rainy season is not around the year but it is only for four months from june to september so it's a drier land and completely dependent on the rains the annual monsoons come from the winds of the indian ocean and the are the only rains there are rivers that bring water from winds of the vindhyas but with much less water flow than those of the great northern rivers northern rivers are fortunate because they get the uh, the water supply twice a year one is from the melting snow the other one is from the monsoons over here in this case in southern india it's not uh, the same we don't have the glaciers in southern india as we don't have the uh, tall uh, mountain ranges over here and obviously then the rivers are completely dependent on the seasonal rains next is uh, the limited supply of water in the southern region agriculture in the southern peninsula region depends upon the system of irrigation that is in the absence of rainfall we have to make the water available for the farmlands volcanic rock of the deccan plateau here you have the graph activity you can see the graph in your textbook and there are various questions which are asked so you can check out the answers over here here is activity 5 from your textbook itself you can google it and you can search for the right answers and you can also add a few points if you want of your own over here if i have continued again from your textbook the six i was supposed to choose between the two so i said enough of talking about india now so then i turned my attention towards sri lanka so here you have of nuvara elia you can just go through this slide and uh, read for yourself and take down some important points thank you so much viewers for watching my channel and this video learn sst thank you for all the support which you are showing from time to time by sending me motivational comments and by giving me the like to my videos i do appreciate and keep all my viewers in my prayers so thank you so much see you next time with my new video till then bye bye